come in here and if there's some kind of a mouse okay. and then you would have to have a gate driver circuit that is going to turn this MOSFET for that battery because you have to you're going to have many of those batteries in here and you're going to have many volt and the volt is going to vary up and down so you have to have some kind of an optical probably opto isolator that is going to listen to your microcontroller and its voltage is at 0 to 5 volts, right? Mm -hmm. That's the microcontroller. That's all you can give you. And, and that one, you know, if it's up high somewhere, it's going to be at, at 50 volts, right? Because yeah. the batteries add up. So that's why you can talk to isolator to allow the signal to be thrown up to the level of wherever that battery is sitting and then uh, turn it on. So they make those up to isolate. That's basically uh, an LED that goes into a photo, uh, a photo cell that is going to give a, a voltage to the gate of the to turn it on. So that's what an up to isolate is? It's not exactly up to isolate, it's like a photo transducer or photo transmitter because it has to provide voltage. Mm -hmm. So it shines light on a little photo cell inside. Mm -hmm. It creates the voltage that is going to activate that muscle. Mm -hmm. So this way you don't have to power it on the high side because the light is the power. There's the, the bright light there. It is just on off, so on it's, off. Us, oh, okay. it's just bright. Yeah. Oh, okay. so that's one way. There are some other way you can use a transformer. Do we need one of these for every cell as well? Yeah. And then once you have done that, you still have enough room in your project for more to do, then you can monitor the current. You can take care of um, the overcurrent situation and monitor the temperature, because every of those, I don't know if you want to monitor every single one or one in the middle of the pack. Well, for regulations, we have to have uh, thermal sensors on every module. And module contains a number of batteries? Um, or just one battery? But, but it's like on each one of the packs we have like the little packs, they want us to uh, throw them So we have 26 cells per. Oh, okay, you know so they're in parallel. So yeah. you connect the thermal measurement to every of those parallel strings. Okay, yeah. so, so it's equivalent to monitoring practically every cell in here. So, okay. Is there anything to have those packs? That's what I was thought I was saying. Right? So logically you put the thermal sensor in the middle of those because that's the hottest point, right? In everyone. So you have twenty-six of those coming out. And somehow you have to relay that information to the uh, to, to the microcontroller. So that alone is pretty complicated because of the physical wiring of that stuff. What would make sense probably would be to have another kind of a device like this, because then again they are all at different, well no, they are not at different potentials because this is just a contact, but all of them can be powered from 5 volts. So that's less of an issue, you just have to have some kind of a multiplexer to go between them and read the temperatures, right? Yeah. And you said the reason for using this is so that we don't push really big voltages and currents through the microcontroller for it? So. Well, that's one, of course. But you cannot connect this output to 50 volts someplace, right? Okay. Yeah. So it needs to be uh, shifted up. So either opto isolator or you can use those Ethernet transformers. They make those tiny transformers that are used for connecting to the Ethernet uh, network. There's a pair of four of those. And, uh, it's a pair of two, like all together, four transformers like this, and you, know, you can put in a square wave and give it a square wave to the MOSFET, so you're going to be turning it on and off, on and off, on and off, so on, it doesn't matter really. You also an average current for that resistor to be discharged in the back. Okay. So that may be a cheaper solution, perhaps, instead of that. This may be more expensive than that. That, that would be. 
in an IEC that has at least four of them, right? So you can find them. So that may better integrate with them in the other solution. Okay. Um, I guess another question is, if we do make this for the battery pack, battery mm -hmm. cells that we have got from China, would it work for the new batteries that we get, or would we yeah. have to change the resistor, or should it be able to work on any type right, of battery? That resistor will be depending on how big the battery is. So if you go from a uh, much smaller battery to like those iron phosphate batteries that would need to be discharged with much higher current, then, then the resistor has to be a longer value, right? So you pull actually more current out. But from one to another, lithium ion cell, the standard lithium ion cell, probably is not as important. Okay. Some of the ones we are looking at are pretty close to what we have already, they're just not poorly made. Yeah. Okay. And the only, the only reason I mentioned, mentioned current is because, like, uh, we put in our specifications that we're going to measure the state of charge, and what I've been looking up so far is like saying state of charge is usually measured as an integral of the uh, current coming out of the battery. It's like Coulomb counting. Yeah. Yeah, but it's very inaccurate. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Basically, I accumulate a lot of error, so you still want to see the voltages, and you kind of try to catch the battery when it's full, so you reset the count, or, or go all the way down to zero, yeah. and reset the count too. I think I tried doing that for the solar power team. And just, I just stopped. It's hard to do. Mm -hmm. So, you best best is to. If you know that the car hasn't been used for quite a while, you you have the situation where voltage reflects the state of charge. Yeah. Because the differences are due to the current going in and out, and it lasts for a number of uh, minutes after that. So the train has to pass through, and then voltage represents state of charge. But you know, if you let's say turn on the car, drive for uh, five minutes, turn it off measure the voltages, they're going to be lower than what they should be after, you know, after some time the voltages are going to come back up a little bit. Yeah. And that's what they do, it's like, uh, there is a model to it, but uh, nobody has a really good model for battery to represent what it does. But yeah, measuring the current, and put a perfect sensor, on the line, and basically you have maybe a number of those A to D converters. You can use one for this, one for the current, and one to measure the temperatures. If you have three or four of them. One more quick question. Uh, since we are trying to implement the wireless transmission of what you suggested, um, what would you suggest for wireless transmission? Radio transmission? or? Yeah, I think best, easiest, use this uh, Wi-Fi module, right? Yeah. Like, there is this one. Wi-Fi, I think they call them. Roving networks. Good thing about this module is that it contains an R micro in there, and they will give you the code if you sign on disclosure agreement that you will not propagate the code to everyone. They'll tell you what's inside, so you can use that arm to be your microcontroller for other things too. Yeah. This way you don't end up too. I guess it's about forty dollars. It's not bad. I guess that brings to another question. Would you recommend not using a PSOC? As we're pretty slow on using a PSOC for this project. No, this stuff would be great for doing these kind of things, you know, mm. because it's kind of on board. But then it can talk to that module, right, mm. uh, over, let's say, SPI. Yeah. And the module is going to do the fast networking to, you know, you can easily connect to uh, Wi-Fi routers or to even school network if mm. you wanted to. And then you can, it allows you also to do the UDP packets if you wanted, so have your own proprietary kind of, you know, another computer that's going to just send the data over that Wi-Fi without having to go through this uh, TCP IP protocols if you didn't want to. But you can run down to, to text data can go through. 
So you can have the two talking to each other, and all of the things in, in data communications, you know, something that, that requires C and other things, I would program that in ARM. Anything that talks directly to the hardware, for A to D, for the multiplexers and everything, do that in piece of This okay. way you can split the work between two different people also. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. And, and then Wi-Fi can host a website too, that you can go into, because it can be a hotspot, I mean, uh, the, what do you call them? Ad hoc network on its own. So it's going to host a node, and you can connect to it with your room. You know, do that, and then see what the voltages are on the phone. Oh, okay. So that's what you meant by do that. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, someone else. Those little things. Mm -hmm. They have white. I have to look at this. Yeah. Oh, see that. Thank you. Yeah. What was this thing again? It was a microcontroller. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so actually, I kind of outlined the idea that 